Andy, what's with me when that light turns on? I don't know. Well, shouldn't we stop? No, I don't, I don't think it matters. I have a friend that drives around with it on all the time. Forget it. We're going to be late. What's going on? I think we've got in trouble. Side of the road, and these horns were honking, and we wouldn't even know where we were. Well, whenever you have to pull out of traffic in an emergency, know that you're going to be affecting that traffic. I mean, don't just pull out without bothering to look. And chances are, when people see you're having problems, they'll give you a break. We'd have given you a break. Well, you heard all about it. Andy said his father would disown him if he could. I guess we should have pulled off right away when that warning light came on. Yeah, listen, let's talk about those lights before we hit the road. Now, there are three main warning lights or gauges you should all be aware of. Oil pressure, temperature, and alternator. Now, if the oil pressure or temperature light comes on, pull off the road as quickly as possible and stop the engine. This is to avoid any permanent damage. If the alternator light comes on, this means the alternator is not charging the battery. And you should drive home, go to a service station, or take it to the dealer. And the reason is you might not be able to restart the car once you turn it off. And your four-way flashers might give out if the battery's weak. Is there anything you can do for yourself? Sure is. If it's the oil pressure light, you might be low on oil, and you can just pour some in. All right, Mark, pop the hood release for me. Cindy, open up the hood. Good job. And now, it's not as complicated as it looks. Anybody want to guess as to where the oil goes? Is this it? Good job, Janet. OK. Now. Most cars have a cap like this one. This is where you add the oil. And you won't mistake it for anything else. Now remember, if the temperature light comes on, or if the needle moves into hot, pull off the road and let the engine cool down. You may be overheating because you're low on coolant. That's one thing you can fix on the road, too. Now, another very important point. Whatever you do, don't take off the radiator cap. It's very hot, and you're liable to have boiling coolant gushing out at you. That can cause some severe burns in your face and your arms. So be very careful. OK? Now, where do you check to see if you're low on coolant? Oh, I think this is it. Right. This is the coolant recovery tank. Now, you can see if there's coolant in it or not. And you want to keep a mixture of antifreeze and water in here at all times. Now, in an emergency, you can just add water and keep on driving, as long as the warning light stays off or the needle moves out of hot. Now, sometimes your engine will overheat on a hot day when you're stuck in traffic. If it should overheat, try turning off the air conditioner and turning on the heater. On a hot day? That's right. By turning on the heater, you're drawing the heat out of the engine through the heater core. It looks like a small radiator, except it's used for the heater. And it's a good way to cool down the engine. Now, it may not be very comfortable, but it sure beats getting stuck in traffic or ruining your engine. Now, there are a few service checks you should make on your car every couple of weeks. And they only take about three minutes. But if you take this time regularly, you find yourself saving a lot of time, a lot of money, and perhaps even a life down the road. For the easy checks are visual ones. Any guesses? Well, this coolant tank you talked about, you can just look at. Good. What else? Washer fluid? Well, it might sound simple, but it's important, too. If you can't see out your windshield, you shouldn't be driving anywhere. 
And don't forget to use a fluid that won't streak or glaze. Now, is there anything else? All right, that's it for the visual checks. Wash your fluid and cool it. Now, let's get down to something we can touch. Uh, Mark, you should be an expert on that. Well, you can check the oil. Well, show us how to do it. OK. Now, tell us what you're doing here. All right, well, you pull out the oil stick, wipe it off, put it back in, and then look at it. I guess it's right where it should be. All right, now, what might be our last critical check? Anyone know what this is for? Checking tires. All right, what does it say? 35. Right, that's 35 pounds per square inch. Is that what it should be? Janet, where would be the most logical place for you to look? I don't know. In the owner's guide? Sure, but the owner's guide generally refers to the tire decal placed somewhere like the right door of the glove box door. And what if you're not riding on your original tires? Where's the most convenient place for you to check? Right on the tire? See if it's there. It says 35 PSI, maximum pressure. Good. You should always inflate your tires to the recommended pressure on the tire decal. And do it when the tires are cold, because after you drive a bit, they heat up, and that raises the pressure. And cold pressure is what you should measure. Now, four simple checks. Coolant, washer fluid, engine oil, and tires. Now, do any of you think it would take longer than three minutes to check these? Now, of course, there are other checks and maintenance you should do. And it's all in the owner's manual, and I suggest you take a look at it. OK, Janet, why don't you drive, and let's take off. Sure, you got cables? Yeah, they're in my trunk. OK. Thanks. Hey, Robbie. Well, what's going on? Oh, I left my lights on, so I need to jump. Red is positive, black is negative. Guys, that's not the way to do it. What do you mean? You could get a shock, or the battery might explode if you don't attach the cables right. What are you talking about? I never heard of that. Attach the positive ends first. There. Then the negative end to the good battery. Okay. Now, you're not supposed to attach the negative end to the bad battery. Instead, clip it to the engine block or a bolt in the engine compartment. Well, how do you know all this? My brother works on cars. I've been helping him for years. Well, I still don't think it's going to start if you don't attach the other side to the battery. The reason you don't do that is because you could get a spark, or gases from the battery could cause it to explode. Come on, let's give it a try. Now you take the cables off the reverse of how you attach them. The negative, then the positive. Okay. 
Make sure that your clothing or the cables or anything else stays away from the moving parts. And you guys have been a big help. Thanks. Can I give you a ride homework? Sure. Thanks again, Cambridge. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Well, I guess you've been working on cars a long time. Well, I'm no mechanic, but I try to do all the simple stuff myself. All you gotta do is read the owner's guide. You make it sound easy. It is, Mark. It really is. 